In this presentation, I'll be talking about how allele frequencies can change due to natural selection. So evolution is change in uh, frequencies of alleles over time. Any change counts as evolution. But often we are very interested in changes th that are adaptive, that increase an organism's fitness. So then we're talking about natural selection. So we know that lactose tolerance has evolved. Uh, I'll tell a little story here about lactose tolerance that probably explains why it evolved, but you'd have to look at individual populations to know exactly how it all played out. So let's say that individuals and their offspring who can digest uh, milk, they have access to a important resource, important nutritional resource, a source of calories and nutrients. That allows them to maybe live longer or produce more offspring or to raise healthier offspring. Maybe they recover from uh, sickness faster than those who can't uh, digest lactose. If you, digest, if you can't digest lactose and you, you drink it, you get sick. Um, if you avoid it, you still you don't have access to an important source of calories. So individuals who can digest milk effectively, um, they should ha on average have higher fitness. They should live, be more likely to live to reproductive maturity. They should be more likely to re reproduce. They should be more likely to produce more offspring. So that's our little uh, mostly true story about lactose and fitness. So this is what it would look like if we were out and collecting data on the frequency of alleles related to lactose tolerance. This is what it could look like if we were tracking the frequency of those alleles in a population over time. X-axis here is years, hundreds of years. Uh, Y-axis is the frequency of the big L allele, where individuals that are homozygous dominant, big L, big L, or heterozygous, big L, little L, they are able to digest lactose. So let's say that there is selection acting on the big L allele, that it is advantageous to be able to digest lactose, and that your fitness is higher than lactose intolerant individuals. So if we start off with a frequency of 0 0.625, uh, frequency of the big L allele, those who can digest lactose, they're going to live longer, they're going to be more likely to survive to reproductive maturity, they are going to pass, they're going to have more children, they're going to pass that allele on to their children. So the frequency of the allele is going to increase over time. And then that process is going to potentially continue all the way until the allele increases to a very high frequency or even reaches fixation. So when an allele has a frequency of 1 or 100% of the genome is composed of the allele, 100% of the individuals have that allele for that gene, we say it is fixed. So natural selection can drive an allele to fixation. Doesn't always do it, often it doesn't, but natural selection can drive an allele to fixation. That's equivalent to saying that natural selection can increase an allele's frequency, natural selection can cause evolution. But again, this is evolution, but not speciation necessarily, or in the case of humans, not speciation at all. We only have a single human species. So we need to remember to unhitch these terms. Natural selection, evolution, and speciation all have their own particular meanings. Natural selection is just one kind of evolution. We would call this directional selection. The, we're increasing consistently in a direction, a direction of increasing the frequency of the allele, increasing the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals, increasing the frequency of lactose tolerance in the population. So this is directional selection, increasing the frequency of the lactose tolerance phenotype, genotype, and allele. Another term you'll hear is this is graph is showing positive selection. It's selection for a, the big L allele. Unfortunately, terminology related to patterns of evolution, you have to pay attention to the context. Often we can, it will depend on what 
allele we are focused on and how we are framing the analysis. In this case, we're showing a increase in the big L allele, and that big L allele is associated with higher fitness. So we think of this as positive selection, selection for this big L allele. The opposite of that, there's also something called negative selection. This the pattern we see here could also be referred to as negative selection if we just shamed, we just changed our framing of the analysis slightly. We'll get to that in a section. So direct in a sec second, directional selection is going to shift the distribution of a trait or a distribution of alleles in a single consistent direction. So if we start off here with our big L allele at 0 0.6 and our little L allele at 0 0.375, we're going to shift the distribution uh, where the little L allele uh, is uh, gone and the big L allele is completely dominant. We could also look at the distribution of genotypes and see how that shifts where when the big L when the little L allele is present we're going to have some homozygous recessives or some heterozygotes over time we could shift the distribution away from that. So again positive selection refers to thinking about these changes in terms of the allele the big L allele which is beneficial to fitness. However anytime one allele increases the big L allele the other allele is going to decrease. So as big L allele increases, little l allele declines. If we were focusing our analysis on the little l allele, we could say it is fixed at zero. The big L is fixed at one, a frequency of one, 100%. The little l allele is fixed at zero. And if we were thinking in terms of fitness, we would say there is selection against the little l allele because individuals who are little l, little l, have lower fitness, they're lactose intolerant, so selection is not going to favor them. So there is negative selection against the little l allele. This is also a form of directional selection because it's in Cre it's just the opposite uh, perspective. This allele is declining a consistent direction. The genotypes, the heterozyg the frequency of heterozygotes, the frequency of homozygous recessives is going to de decline in a single direction. And again, when we're focusing on the decline of allele, we're talking about negative selection. Of course, there are many forces that can impact allele frequencies. We always have to remember that. Um, can't forget that natural selection is just one force.